Well, that said, I'm so glad that you're here with us to worship at the Journey Church this morning. As we start out, you know that we've been in a seven-week sermon series, and it's entitled, God's Goal for Each Christian is to Keep Growing Every Day. God's goal for each Christian is to keep growing every day. Here's an easy way to remember it. Every Christian, growing every day. Every Christian, growing every day. And we actually started off this sermon series in Psalm 1, talking about that tree that's planted by the streams of water, and it will always produce its fruit in due season. And so then we went to Ephesians 4, talking about that spiritual maturity, how we're supposed to have a spiritual maturity as we grow up into maturity in Christ. And then we mentioned that we're going to do this sermon series and teach it through an acronym that you can easily remember, growing Growing, G-R-O-W-I-N-G, growing. We're growing into maturity. That's the goal for every Christian every day of our lives. So G is get to know God all through the day and night. It doesn't mean that you just sit around and that you just constantly read the Bible all day long and you don't go to school and you don't go to work and you don't sleep and you don't eat. That's not what this means. But the Bible's clear in Deuteronomy, in the morning you need to go to God. Throughout the day you need to go to God. In the evening you need to go to God. And then of course at night you need to go to God. Amen? So then the very next sermon was, R, repent and return to the Lord often. Repent and return to the Lord often. O, offer thanksgiving to God often. O, offer thanksgiving to God often. And then W is willing to submit your desires to God. We need to be willing to submit our desires to God. Now, you can live your whole life and live out your own earthly desires and what you desire, but are you going to live out your life and your desires according to what God desires? And so that's where we're headed with it this morning. In God's Word, God asks every man and woman and child a very important life question. It's found in Psalm chapter 34, verse 12. Psalm 34, verse 12. Who is the man who desires life? Who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Who doesn't like to have the desire to see a good life, to have a long life? God asked this very thought-provoking question. Then God himself provides the answer to his own question. In Psalm 34, 12 through 17, we see the whole passage. Psalm 34, 12 through 17, listen. Who is the man or the woman or child? Who is the person who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Watch what you say. If you want to have a good life, a long life, then God says to watch what you say. Watch what you speak with the mouth that he gave you. Verse 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So depart from your sinful ways. We are all sinners and we're going to gravitate toward our sin. But God said if you desire a good life and length of days, then seek to not live out your sinful habits and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Some people are always causing drama. Some people are always causing drama and stirring things up and saying things that get people riled up. But God says if you desire a good life and a long life, seek peace peace and pursue it. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. I want you to see the aspect here where you see the face of God. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. Now watch this. Verse 17 is one you need to take notice of. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Is that not a verse that you need every day of the week? The righteous cry, and the Lord hears, and he delivers them out of all their troubles. Not some, not a part of, not just the minor ones, but all of their troubles. Then just three psalms later, 
Just three psalms later, God again addresses the topic of a person's desires. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So look at this. We have delight, and we have desire. Okay, your worldly desires we delight in, right? We delight in our worldly desires. But then sometimes we delight in God's desires. Amen? As a Christian, don't we sometimes fall into both categories? We delight in worldly desires, but we also delight in heavenly desires. God's purpose here in Psalm 37, 4 is to say, delight yourself in the Lord. Not in the world. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. When the people prayed to God to rescue them from slavery from Egypt, he did. But did they love him and turn to him and walk in his ways after he rescued them? Sadly, no. Let's listen now to Psalm 81, and we'll be in verses 8 through 16. Psalm 81, verses 8 through 16. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O oh, Israel, if you would listen to me, let there be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any foreign God. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. And Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart to walk in their own devices. Did you know that God will reach out for you, reach out for you, reach out for you, reach out for you. But if you continue to have a stubborn heart, you will not turn to him. You will not humble yourself. You will not allow God to speak into your life. Then because of the stubbornness of your heart, he will allow you to walk in your own devices following your own earthly, worldly, lustful desires. Verse 13, oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those who hate the Lord would pretend obedience to him. Is there a time in your life where you pretend you're obeying? Those who hate the Lord would pretend obedience to him and their time of punishment would be forever. But I would free you from the, feed you from the finest of the wheat and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. God would meet all of our needs. But if you're going to be stubborn in heart, you're going to be like the prodigal child and go out and not even have what the swine are eating. But if we would turn back to God, he would say this in verse 16 to us, but I would feed you with the finest of the wheat and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Now let's make this passage more personal to us as individuals. Let's read it again slowly and put our own names there instead of Israel and Egypt. I'll show you how it works. I'll put my own name there. But I want you to be pretending that your name is there. Amen? All right. So Psalm 81, and we're going to be in verse 10 and following. I, the Lord, am your God, Bruce, who brought you up from the pit you were in. Bruce, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But Bruce did not listen to my voice and Bruce did not obey me. So I gave him over to the stubbornness of his heart to walk in his own devices. Oh, that Bruce would listen to me, that Bruce would walk in my ways. I would quickly subdue his enemies and turn my hand against his adversaries. Do you see how you can put your name there and you can understand how intimate and personal and direct God can be to us, his people, even in the 21st century? This was Old Testament writings. But God can speak to us today very clearly when you start to realize you're not Israel and you're not Egypt, but you can put your name there and not violate the scripture and see how God wants to turn his love and compassion and kindness towards you. God sees right through us. Did you know that? Sometimes you can put on a mask, but God sees right through you and me. He sees what we believe, say, and actually do. Listen to what God tells the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31. 
They come to you as people come and sit before you as my people and hear your words, but they do not do them. For they do the lustful desires expressed by their mouth and their heart goes after their gain. The topic of a person's desires are still spoken about as what causes a man, woman, or child to seek God or to seek the ways of the world. Mark chapter 4 verses 13 through 20 is the section of scripture where Jesus taught a parable about the four different types of soils upon which God's gospel and truth falls upon. Now as you listen to these four soils, can you discern which soil your heart is. Mark chapter 4 verses 13 through 20. And he, Jesus, said to them, do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? He was speaking to his apostles, right? The disciples should have really known what these parables meant because they were God's chosen one. They were on staff. They were walking with him, spending every day, seven days a week, 24-7 with Jesus. And yet they said, Lord, what do these parables mean? And listen to what he says. And Jesus said to them, do you not understand the parable? How will you understand all the parables? And then he explains the parables for their sake, but also for our sake in the 21st century. Verse 14, the sower sows the word. These are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown. And when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them. In a similar way, these are the ones on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no firm root in themselves, but are only temporary. Then when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word. But the worries of the world and the seedfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. The third soil is what is commonly called the thorny soil. People have a hard time wading through the difficulties, distractions, and desires of this sinful world, which causes them to desire the wrong things. What about you? Which desires of yours are competing with God's desires for you and for his kingdom? Have you ever heard the phrase, I don't have time for God's kingdom because I'm too busy building my kingdom. Are your desires for school, work, family, and paying the bills what you spend the majority of your time on? Or are your desires just fun, rest, entertainment, no work, traveling, and enjoying your hobbies? Are that, is that your main goals? This next verse is a very strong yet true assessment of the people that follow the devil. This next verse is Jesus himself, who is the Son of God, revealing to the Pharisees who they really are and who their God, little g, is. John chapter 8, verse 44. Now, you want to talk about Jesus being direct. You may say, well, I can't believe God would say something. I thought he spoke everything in love. This is love. If the truth be known and you share it in a kind way, is that not appropriate? Jesus shares the truth. These people need to know who their real God was. They thought the Heavenly Father in heaven was their God. But Jesus says, no, you have a different God. The devil is your father. Listen, John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So whenever we tell a lie, do you know who we're following? We're not following Jesus. We're following the devil. And if we're born again and Jesus is our Savior, we need to make sure that we always speak the truth, never tell a lie. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Ephesians 2, 3. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Listen to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It is a trustworthy statement if any man aspires to the office of overseer, which is also means a bishop or a pastor, it is a fine work he desires to do. I remember some 27 to 30 years ago, I remember back in that time frame, God was putting it on my heart, a desire to be a pastor, to be a preacher to his people and to lost people. And I would remember telling my wife about this and telling her my heart and what I sense God doing. What God says in his word is a trustworthy statement. If any man aspires to the office of overseer, it is a fine work he desires to do. There was a desire here placed in my heart by God. It was a good desire, a godly desire, a heavenly desire. And I've been able to enjoy that for many years. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. Listen, if you love money, if your goal and your desires are to make a lot of money and you're always seeking how to make more money and you love money and what money can buy, listen to the four things that that love of money, that pursuit, that desire for more money is going to bring to you. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. If that was going to be your outcome after loving money and seeking money and desiring more money, wouldn't it be better to be poor and have a life you enjoyed and a life that God would bless? 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound teaching, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. Whenever you go to seek out a church, make sure that you pay attention to what is taught and preached. Because in the days to come, the Bible is clear. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, their own earthly desires, their own fleshly desires, their own desires coming from their own sinful mind and heart. You must be careful what you sit your life and your marriage and your family under. Make sure that they are teaching the Word of God. What would people rather have preached to them? Something that makes them feel good? about themselves and their situation or something that is convicting from God himself in heaven to get them on their way, to keep them on his holy and righteous and just track. Most people would opt to, hey, teach and preach something, pastor, that's going to bless me, that's going to make me feel good, that's going to make me feel like this is my best life now and, and, and just be my spiritual cheerleader and pat me on the back and tell me all is well with my life. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desire. So be warned by that scripture. Titus chapter 2 verse 12, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. We can live unsensibly. Don't you see a lot of people around you living unsensibly? and not living righteously, and not living godly in our present age. I know I see it. What are we to do about it? Well, first of all, we take our own assessment of our own spiritual life. Are we living sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age? We have no right to point a finger at someone else for not living sensibly, righteously, and godly if we're not. So point your finger at yourself first. Make sure that you're assessing yourself before you assess the generation at large. James chapter 3 verse 4. Look at the ships also. Though they are so great and are driven by strong winds, 
are still directed by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. It's not wherever the ship wants to go. It's not where the big mast wants to go. It's not where the engines want to go. But a ship, it's not even the winds as to where the ship would go. It has to do with how the rudder is placed in the water. The rudder is the smallest part of the ship. And yet the small rudder is what's sending the ship in a given direction. And the rudder is directed by a human being that has desires and a point of origin and a point of destination, right? And so they're trying to get from point A to point B. But is that the place you need to go? God's saying your life is like a ship. You are the captain of that ship. How you turn the rudder ends up determining where you're going to end up at port. And so you need to make sure that you know where you're heading. Are you heading in a direction of your own desires? Or are you heading in a direction that's God's desires and you're going to end up at the port he wants you to end up at? James chapter 4 verse 5. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? Now this is strong language from the Lord. He's saying, listen, do you think that I spoke the word of God because I didn't have anything else to do? Do you think I spoke the word just because it's a holy thing to do, but yet you can go about living life as you please? No, sir. No, ma'am. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us. Now, you may say, ooh, I thought we weren't supposed to be jealous, pastor. This is a wholesome jealousy. Just like a husband might have for his wife or the wife might have her husband, that they don't like seeing them talk to other men and women, right? They want them to be faithful to them. They are jealous for a holy marriage, jealous for a righteous marriage, not jealous and not letting them ever speak to another person of the opposite sex, but I'm talking about a good jealousy where you say, I'm really jealous of that person in my heart in a good way. God is jealous for the Spirit. If you are born again, the Holy Spirit lives in your body and soul, and the Bible tells us that our body is the temple of the Lord. So if the Holy Spirit's indwelling there, God's wanting that place to be holy. He's not wanting us to take the Holy Spirit to places that the Holy Spirit shouldn't go and be around things and say things and do things and act in a way that is not good for the Holy Spirit. So the Father and Jesus are jealous for the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Now, the Holy Spirit's the third member of the Trinity. We know that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There's not three gods, and there's not three personalities. There's one God in three persons. And so we know the Heavenly Father sitting on the throne in heaven, and Jesus, the Son of God, is sitting at his right hand. But the third member of the Trinity is taking up residence in our souls and lives and bodies and minds if we are born again. And so God, as one God, jealously desires the Holy Spirit. And if he's graciously allowed the Holy Spirit to take up residence in you and be the guarantee for you for your salvation, live in such a way that you say, I'm going to take care of the temple. The Holy Spirit, God himself resides in me and God is jealous for the Holy Spirit that he has made to dwell in us. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 10, for the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Now, haven't you just heard that earlier in the message? Where did Peter get this? He got this from the psalmist back in Psalm 34, right? He was, he was requoting what was said by the psalmist. For the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Just because Jesus has come on the scene, just because we don't have animal sacrifices anymore, just because we don't have a temple and we have local churches today, just because the Psalms was in the Old Testament doesn't mean it doesn't apply in the New Testament. The apostle who was an apostle under Jesus Christ in the New Testament post-resurrection is still quoting Psalm 34. For the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. That is an eternal truth. So whether you're in the Old Testament or whether you're in the New Testament or you're in the 21st century as we are, this is still a truth if you desire a long life and to see good days and live a long life. 
2 Peter 2.10 And especially those who indulge the flesh in its corrupt desires and despise authority, daring, self-willed, they do not tremble when they revile angelic majesties. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about that stubbornness of heart. Right? When you just don't want to have an humble heart. Well, if we're going to be daring and self-willed and say, I'm not going to do what God wants me to do. I know what the Bible says, but. And if we just decide we're going to live our own way, there are going to be consequences for that lifestyle. For that hardened heart. For that stubborn heart. So let's don't be daring and self-willed. That's exaltation. God said, if you exalt yourself, I'll humble you. And nobody wants to be humiliated. But if you will humble yourself... He will exalt you in due time. So we don't want to be daring and self-willed. We want to humble ourselves, and we want God to exalt us in due time. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 18. For speaking out arrogant words of vanity. Have you ever spoken arrogantly? Have you ever spoken words of vanity that mean nothing? For speaking out arrogant words of vanity, they entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error. If we live by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world, then we live like the people who are living in error. That is not living righteously. Now, as we wrap up, let's remember that God's way is always the best way. Amen? I want you to look at this slide. You're welcome to take a picture of it. It'll also be on the video later. Look at what happened and what God said to Joshua the one that succeeded Moses. Listen to what God told Joshua right after Moses died. This great Old Testament leader, Moses, died. And look at what God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. We keep trying to have success and be prosperous outside of following God's Word, outside of following His wisdom, outside of following His will, outside of following His ways. Can't happen. He said, then, see that's the result, then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? It's a question. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, exclamation point. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, Joshua was a man just like me and you. He had desires. And some of them may have been good desires. Some of them may not have just been fleshly and worldly and sinful desires. Did you know that you can have good desires? There's nothing wrong with having good desires. But if those good desires take you in a direction to keep you from following God's desires for your life, that's when you're off track, right? We don't want the good to substitute out the best. So look, the book of this law, now he was talking about the Pentateuch. He was talking way back here, right? The book of the law. Okay, but now you and I have the whole word of God, right? So this applies to us. The book of God, the entire 66 books, the book shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. We need to be in the Word in the morning, throughout the day, and in the evening, so that we'll be careful to obey it. If you're not in the Word a lot, how can you obey it? If it's not something that's constantly staring you in the face, you're likely to not obey it. So that you will be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make yourself prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded? This is a command. It's not, hey, you know what? If you don't have a direction in life, and you'd like a direction, and let's say you want to be prosperous and successful in whatever your hands decide to do, then hey, here's an option. This is not an option. This is a command. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Did you know that God does not want us to be weak and frail? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. Listen, if the God of the universe is right next to you, if he's right by your side, why would you be trembling? Why would you be dismayed? The God of heaven is right beside you. Look, it's a promise. Do not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you. Where? 
wherever you go. Now look at this. This is Joshua. He's pointing, going straight. Let's follow God's will. Amen? If we follow God's word, God's ways, and God's wisdom, then he will guide us, walk beside us, fight for us, protect us, and provide for us, just like he did for everyone in the Old Testament, everyone in the New Testament, and everyone in every generation since the book of Revelation was written. This word is for all time. Just because it's in the Old Testament doesn't mean it doesn't apply. It still applies. And this is God's desire for me. It's God's desire for you. It's God's desire for those that are watching this message by YouTube video. It's for you. It's for our generation and for generations that even come after us. Listen, at the end of the day, we need to know that God has much better desires for our lives than we do. Do I really think that I know what's best for my life? Let's get real for a minute. Let's get transparent. Do I really think that I know what's best for my life? Who would know what's best for me? Me or God? What about you? Who would know what's best for your life? You or God? The answer is God, of course. So let's decide today to surrender our desires to Him. Let's delight ourselves in Him. And then He will give us the desires of our heart. He will guide us into those desires. Don't you remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, which means obey everything that you know God has commanded you to do. We have three responsibilities. God says when you do those three, not those two, not those one of the three. When you do those three, then I will direct your paths. I will make your path straight, right? It's the same thing the way he does it here, a cause and effect verse. Joshua 1, 8 and 9 is a cause and effect passage, just like Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And also, remember when we read Psalm 81, 8 through 16 and 17, you remember? That's a cause and effect passage. If these people that had stubborn hearts would surrender their hearts to me, humble themselves, open wide their mouth, I would fill it. If we would do this, God would do this. Isn't that a good parent? Right now, what desires are in your mind and heart that are not God's desires for you? You know what they are. Today, if you're willing, submit your ungodly desires to Jesus and he will replace them with so much better desires than you can possibly imagine. Listen, God's not saying that you can't have good desires. Good desires to have good food, go to a good restaurant, see a good movie, go on a good vacation, uh, get a good education and have a really good job and have a good home and a good car. He's not saying you can't have good desires. We're talking about the fleshly desires here, the lustful desires, the ungodly desires that come from being a sinner on a sinful planet. That's the desires that we're talking about. So just so we're clear, God is talking about not having those worldly desires that are corrupting you because he has godly desires. Aren't you glad that God's got a goal for your life? I'm so glad that God's got a goal for my life. He didn't just allow me to be born to my mom and dad, and then once they put some little clothes on me and kind of patted my bottom and sent me out the door and said, okay, go live a life and go figure out what it is you're going to do. You know, it's kind of like what a bird does. A bird just says, hey, fed you a few worms now, kicks them out of the nest, and they fall and hit the concrete. Right? That's not how God is. That's not the kind of parent he is. God actually says, listen, I'm going to walk with you all the days of your life. Remember Psalm 23? He makes you to lie down in green pastures. God says that blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Right? So God is saying, I will be with you wherever you go as long as you're following my desires. If you follow the earth's desires, the world's desires, your sinful, lustly sinful desires, then you're on your own. Like the prodigal child. 
But even if that's happened, you can turn and come back to God and say, God, I followed my own desires, my sinful desires. I want to come home. And what would you find? A God with his arms open, just like Jesus on the cross. Amen? If you're far from God today, and you've just been pretending obedience to him, and you want to come back to him, and you want to really live that Christ-centered life, you want to trade in your earthly desires for God's heavenly desires for your life, he's ready. That's what these two next invitation songs are going to be about. But let's just say you do love God and you are following his desires. We can all follow his desires a little closer, right? I want to grow more in my Lord. Remember our phrase from our message series, God's goal for each Christian is to keep growing every day. Every Christian growing every day. Every Christian growing every day. That means we're supposed to be growing every day. Amen?